Okay, welcome to another Orbiter Spaceflight Simulator video. This video is going to be a direct continuation of the previous video where I'm taking the XR2 from Wide Awake International. And I'm going to be docking it with this ICV. Let me check the name on that again. I think it's... Yeah, ICV, and I, and I don't remember what it stands for. It's interne um, Interplanetary... Maybe it's Interplanetary interplanetary carrier vessel that's probably what that stands for it's basically a gigantic fuel tank that's uh, got an engine attached to the back of it and it gives you a pretty realistic uh, way to go from low earth orbit to some other uh, some other planet you know it is specifically I believe this was designed for flights out to Jupiter so let's go ahead and unpause and just jump back into the flight. Let me switch back to the XR2. Switch camera views, unpause. So in the last video, I simply brought the XR2 up to low Earth orbit, and we haven't completely finalized everything there. As you can see, we have an apoapsis of 214 and a periapsis of 200 kilometers, so I still need to circularize the orbit. Now, I did do a pretty decent job on the, on the plane alignment. I arrived in orbit only 0 0.04 degrees out of plane, which is basically nothing. And you can uh, dock, or you can, complete, you can successfully rendezvous and dock without ever bothering to correct that. But in all likelihood, we'll pass a node once or twice, so we'll probably fix that up anyway. Let me go ahead and target the ICV, because one thing I never did was I never checked what its altitude even was. So it uh, looks like it's up at 500 kilometers. We're down here at 200, so we're going to catch up to it pretty fast. Uh, it's probably just as well that I stopped the burn when we get up to 200 kilometers, just for the fact that there is quite a bit of distance there to cover. So we'll go ahead and take care of that here. All right, let me... What are we doing? Let's go to the prograde position just because I feel better if I'm in prograde. Coming up to the apoapsis in 800 seconds, but the time to the node is uh, 1,100 seconds away. That means I will be able to circularize the orbit before I even consider worrying about my difference in plane alignment. And again, this amount of plane alignment is nothing to worry about. You can uh, certainly rendezvous when you're this uh, far out because we're very close but if you are going to pass a node it just makes sense to me to go ahead and take care of it so let's uh, fast forward time to the apoapsis so we can circularize the orbit or even you know maybe more than circularize at the very least I want to bring the other side up so that I'm not going to go around and crash into the atmosphere but since the target vessel is quite a bit higher we may want to bring up the other side a little bit more eh, I don't know we'll see I'll figure it out when I get there change the frame projection all right let's go a little faster than that okay we're about 60 seconds out so definitely get everything ready get the ship settled down And I only need to go forward by a few more seconds. I'm going to go ahead and leave prograde autopilot on, and I'm going to engage a little bit of time warp here to get closer to the node. And I didn't check with the burn time calculator or anything to see when I need to begin the burn to increase the altitude, but probably just need about a little bit of math here, uh, or a little bit of rough estimate. My guess is 150 meters per second, and I could be miles off on that. But I think that's pretty close, which means a burn of just a second or two. So, burning. Translation. Translation to make up the difference. And good enough. So that takes care of that. So we're not going to go around and die. And the radiator, double check, it is open. So then we're coming up on the descending node here in just 200 seconds. And I only need, uh, use, if I were going to use the full power of the main engines, I would need one-tenth of one second 
in order to take care of that little bit of plane alignment. But it would probably use more fuel to rotate into the, uh, the ascending node orientation. And since AN equals AN or ascending node equals antinormal, that means we need to rotate this way instead of this way. But using all that fuel to rotate this way just to burn the main engines for one tenth of one second doesn't make sense to me. So instead we'll just use translation thrusters to bump the vessel up just a, the smallest amount. So we'll do that when the time to the node is maybe like two seconds. We just want to make sure that our vessel is pointed at that center line. We don't have to be prograded. It could be in any orientation because we're going, you know, up. So it doesn't matter how we're, how we're yawed. It just matters that we're facing forward. Or I should say facing, uh, our, that our pitch is level. That's actually what matters here. It's coming up to the node here. Okay, we're just about there. Make Rotation. sure translation. we're in translation mode. And I'm just going to bump the number two. Just a little bit here. I guess I could have used hover engines and would get this get this job done a little sooner. I always kind of forget how weak the translation thrusters are. We can see here the estimated thrust is now zero. The relative inclination is zero, so we're in good shape. In order to rendezvous, I need to close the distance between my vessel and the target vessel. I also need to be at the same altitude as the other vessel. So I have two things I have to do. I have to bring up my orbit and I have to close the distance. Uh, you can use a variety of methods to do this. In fact, I'm doing something really fun right now, and I'll take just a moment here to explain this. Uh, Dimitri set up this really uh, interesting scenario where when you start the scenario, you don't have any MFDs. They're all off. None, in fact, the, the idea is that none of them work. And if you turn them on, then it's an automatic mission failure because you're basically cheating, at least in the, in, in the spirit of the scenario, you're cheating. So you are in orbit and you have to uh, rendezvous and dock with the target vessel using nothing but pencil, paper, and a calculator. So it's really cool. I'm having a lot of fun doing that. Um, I'm not going to simulate that here in this scenario, obviously, but it's something cool that I'm doing. But for this scenario, we'll take advantage of our tools. We'll probably use a transex. There's a, again, there's a variety of ways you can do this, but we'll use transex. For starters, it says that I've got to select a planet or a moon, and I'm not going to do that. I need to select, uh, what am I doing? View over to setup. I need to change, oh, I need to do an adjustment. So we need a, uh, we're going to target a ship instead of the moon. And the ship is called ICV-1. Now we'll view over to maneuver, turn maneuver mode on. And I don't even think you can use the automatic stuff in the new transexes. I'm not sure. I've never tried it, but I'll probably, I'm just going to do this manually. So I'm going to put in, and the course is way too much of an adjustment, so we'll go down to like fine. Put in enough delta velocity to raise one side of my orbit out so that it's as high as the target vessel. And it looks like we can even do a medium setting here. And you can see these dashed yellow lines. I'm in perfect plane with the ICV, so this is really a two-dimensional problem more so than a three-dimensional problem. I only have to worry about basically forward and backward and up and down. I don't have to worry necessarily about side to side, you know, if you think of side to side as the, as the plane adjustment. So what I want to do is just ra uh, increase my velocity so that these dashed lines sort of start touching the blue outer ring, and that blue outer ring represents the orbital altitude of the target vessel. And you can see that right here, as, as we come around, that dashed perforated yellowness kind of comes out here and it starts to touch right about here. And it looks like here at this point, it's really close. And if I go any higher than that, you can see now we're past the other vessel and we don't really want that. So somewhere in this range is about as as much 
delta velocity as I need to get up to the altitude of the other vessel, but you can see we're still separated in space by a significant amount. So I don't want to do the burn right now. If I did, we would not be even close. So let's do an adjustment on the date. And I'm going to bump it forward by, you know, minutes and possibly hours in order to determine when is going to be the best time to do this burn. And I will also watch, let me actually reset that because that might have been too much of an adjustment. Let me reset and go down to, let's start with the ultra or something. This is probably too low of a setting, but I'd rather start low and work my way up than overshoot it. Right now, according to Transex, I would be very far off, 8,000 kilometers. So as I move time forward, basically I'm saying I don't want to do the burn right now. I want to do the burn farther and farther into the future. And that gives me time to catch up to the other vessel. And you can see as I do that, the closest approach is getting closer and closer. It looks like I can afford to do this at super instead of ultra. And you can see if I did the burn at that particular time, which is, I don't know, it's not that far away, but if I did it then, I would be 4,000 kilometers off, which is still way too much. So let's keep going forward. And now we're down, you know, that's getting much closer. So let me go down to a ultra adjustment now. Continue moving the clock forward. And you can see if I did the burn at this particular time, which again, that's not very far away, then the uh, we would be 63 kilometers off. So let's go down to a hyper setting and really fine tune things. And if I did the burn here, I would be so close to the target vessel that I would be able to throw a rock at it. And that's what we want. But really, we want to get as close as we possibly can, obviously. So I'm going to go all the way down to this crazy setting. And according, <clears throat> according to Transex, I would basically be inside of the, of the vessel at this point. So that's pretty spot on. That's what we want. All right. Let's uh, view over to the target. And according to uh, view target, the, the time to do this burn is 17,000 seconds away. As we know quite well, hopefully by now, uh, if you do burns this far out in the future, they tend to be quite inaccurate. So the first thing I'm going to do is warp time forward until I'm much closer to the time to do the burn. And then we'll kind of update Transex to make sure that everything is still in agreement. So that's the next thing to do. Warping time forward, and we'll go to a thousand, no more than a thousand because that's just an accident waiting to happen. So you can see now we're down to 9,000 seconds, 8,000 seconds, so on. And you can also see over here in Orbit MFD, we're obviously catching up. And maybe when I get down to, eh, like this number, 3,500, just a, or 3,600 seconds out, which is like an hour, then it might not be a bad idea to come back to real time, view back over to the maneuver. And then you'll notice that the closest approach still says 90 meters, but I don't trust it. Watch what happens if I come over here to... Uh, the update, this number, when I hit update, bam, it, it only changed by, uh, was it about 200 and some meters, which is not bad at all, and I would be perfectly happy with that, but you see that uh, if you don't check in after so many seconds into the future, then uh, you could potentially be off by 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers, or God forbid, 50, 60 kilometers, but since it was only 17,000 seconds, the, the inaccuracy, the drift wasn't too bad. But I will go ahead and uh, just keep that in mind. I'm not going to bother doing a correction yet because I want to get even closer yet. And we'll get down to maybe, let's say, uh, I'm trying to think of a number. It's kind of arbitrary at times, but... Like 600 seconds sounds good, which would be a 10 minute lead. So now we're down below a thousand. Keep an eye on that number and somewhere around here. Back to real time, view back over to the maneuver and we'll do an update again and see what the closest approach says at, at that point, 355. So again, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that, that's fine. But as long as I'm here making adjustments, there's no need to keep a 355 meter in accuracy. We'll go down to a super setting, maybe even uh, actually, 
and actually, yeah, so what I'll, my, my thought process here is that in order to minimize the delta V, uh, I have two things I can do. I can adjust time or I can adjust delta V. Let's see what happens if I pull out a little bit of delta V. Will it make it better or worse? I should probably go to a ultra, uh, ultra. So if I take away delta V, it's making it just a touch worse. So let's see what we can do with time. Time I don't care about. So if I do a little bit less time, I can keep the same amount of delta V and get the same burn. What about now? Can I take away some delta V? And yeah, we're, we're, we're only talking about you know a meter or two, so I don't really care. But it's just something to keep in mind. Instead of just immediately jumping to the delta V and saying, what happens if I add in more? You should s s keep in mind that adjusting time can sometimes uh, be better. Okay, we'll go with this burn. So if you over to the target and get closer to that time, get all the way down to uh, probably 100 seconds maybe. Rotation. Let's get the ship rotated. And if I start rotating early, I can take advantage of the sort of the free drift. I don't have to get right up on top of the time to do the burn and then use a lot of RCS. I can plan the rotation much earlier. Okay, let's, uh, now that we're getting, you know, two minutes out from the burn, let's just check in with our maneuver one more time. First of all, with an update, get the latest and greatest information. Nothing's really changed. That's always good. And just touch this a little bit, see what happens. Okay, so we're not really making much of a difference there. And just a quick touch of time, see what happens this way and this way. All right, so that's about as good as it's going to get. All right, now we can view over, oops, rather, yeah, view to target, but rather switch to the auto center. If I can find it, there's so many options here. It's sometimes hard to find what you're looking for. There's auto center. 100 seconds out, we'll engage auto center and got the alert to remember to shut it off when you're done. <laughs> Bad things happen if you don't. Now this particular burn is very sensitive, so when you're done with the burn, you want to turn off the maneuver mode and, and then touch your translation back and forth a little bit. Because when you're rendezvousing, one meter per second of velocity spread out over quite a bit of time can just make a huge difference in whether or not the burn is going to be successful. Now, I do have an auto center on. I, I'm thinking there's like an auto burn or something, but I'm not going to do that. Warping time forward to get closer to the time to do the burn. And I'm not going to go full power on the main because that's only 86 meters a second. Okay, getting ready to do the burn. started it just a touch early because again I'm not going immediately to full power on the main backing off the burn done translation turn switch to translation I'm gonna turn auto center off and finalize the burn here with a little trans little bit of translation and that should be good but we don't want to trust that we did it absolutely perfectly, so switch over to maneuver mode. Turn maneuver mode off. And you can see, you know, we're still off by 517 meters. So I have a little bit of translation one way or the other. Okay, so I need just a little bit more prograde. And now I'm just doing just a little bit of, I guess you'd call it plane change. And I'll go with something like that. Okay, so according to TransX, when we get to the other side of this, actually it's not even all the way around, but when we get to the other side of our orbit, more or less, we will be within eight meters of the ICV. 
and we will have an encounter velocity when we get there of 99 meters per second. So that's that's probably a little higher than you would want under uh, you know ordinary circumstances. But we have these you know supernatural ves vessels here in orbiters, so it's not that big of a deal. But usually, like if you're going to be docking with the, the space shuttle or Soyuz or something, you want to see an encounter velocity that's much lower than that because it basically that's the difference in velocity. That's how fast you're approaching the target in uh, 100 meters per second. You know, with 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 realistic engine technology is a bit much. Okay, so that's going to be it for this part of the video. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here. Let me pause the simulator. And again, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Thumbs down, no problem with that at all. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and you do find this kind of thing interesting. Uh, that way you can be notified when I create and upload new videos. Uh, check for links down in the description of this video. And I will see you in the next part.